The purpose of this video is to demonstrate the proper way to brace metal plate connected wood trusses. We send out bracing and handling guidelines with every truss order, but sometimes a demonstration hits home better than written instructions. I built this model to demonstrate the difference between properly braced trusses and not so properly braced trusses. If you look at this model, you notice all of the trusses have the same lateral restraint attached to the three planes of the trusses, the top cords, the webs, here and here, and, and on the other side, and the bottom cord. You have lateral restraint here. On one side of the trusses, we have diagonal braces. On the other side, there are none. Now, this side has diagonal braces on the top cord, and again, on the webs, I don't know if you can see that, here, and here, but on the other side, there's no diagonal bracing, except for one, I have one diagonal brace right on the king post. Otherwise, these trusses would just flop over and they wouldn't even stand on their own. And that wouldn't make a very good demonstration at all. Uh, before I go on, I want to make a couple of side, note, side notes about lateral restraint. Top cord temporary lateral restraint and diagonal bracing is shown on the paperwork we send out as being applied to the top of the top cords. And you'll notice that I put it on the bottom of the top cords. The reason for that is when you go to sheathe your roof, if you have it on top of the top cords, you have to remove the temporary bracing before you apply the sheathing, where if you do it on the other side, you can leave it, the temporary bracing there and there's really no need to remove it. Um, structurally, there's no reason. Uh, if you want to save a few dollars and remove that, I don't know if that's worth it because how much does it cost for a man to remove those brakes? I'll leave that up to you. But anyway, I prefer to put my temporary top cord lateral restraint on the bottom of the top cord as well as the diagonal bracing. In some cases, uh, You'll need, you'll need uh, purlins on the, on the top cord. If you're going to put metal roofing on, you'd have purlins at two foot on center, in which case your purlins would create your top cord lateral restraint, but then you would also have to add diagonals to the bottom of the top cord so that it wouldn't interfere with the metal roofing and also give you the rigidity you'd need to keep your trusses uh, maintain, you know, no distortion in your trusses. Oh, also, temporary lateral restraint on the webs is not necessary. Temporary lateral restraint on the webs is not nece necessary. However, some webs have a lot of compression and you need lateral restraint as well as diagonal bracing on your webs in some cases. You don't need it for temporary bracing, only for permanent bracing. Well, let me show you first of all how, it, this, how to identify what webs require um, bracing. If you look on the engineered drawing of the truss, I've circled the webs that need compression bracing. Now, that shows up on the drawing, and if you match it up with the model, you can see that the, these same webs have, 
have bracing on them. This this web is so long it requires two two lateral uh, restraints, and this one requires just one because the amount of force is in it. It's in compression and the length of the web. I figure if you're going to be bracing any of it at all, you might as well do it all. A lot of the a lot of the temporary lateral restraint and permanent diagonal bracing matches up with the permanent lateral restraint and, and diagonal bracing. I figure it's better to go in and do it once, do it right. And an important thing to note is that anytime you have lateral restraint, um, it must be accompanied by diagonal braces. Lateral restraint by itself leaves trusses do it'll do this, where when you install the diagonals, it eliminates that. The trusses that are braced properly, let's let's put some weight on them and see what happens. I'll take this. This is about a 40 pound weight. Okay, and we set it on the side that's braced properly. And there's literally, uh, basically, no movement visible that we can see. Well, let's try setting it on the other side and see what happens. Okay, whoop. see the truss is bending on that side. They're doing the exact opposite on the other side, so we have an S-shaped truss. I can't let go of this weight while it's sitting on these trusses or it will crush my model, so I'm going to put it back over here. There it's much safer. You saw what happens to the trusses when they are, are subjected to weight without the proper bracing. So if we go back to that literature that I was talking about, it shows that once you have a solid base of trusses, you can then go uh, 10 trusses further or 20 feet at two foot on center and only use lateral bracing until you need another group of trusses that are braced with both lateral and diagonal bracing. So to test that theory, I made some some uh, blocks of wood that have slots in them to, to fit over these trusses. And see, this is distorted already and it's not coming back. <laughs> Hold on here. And we can attach all these lateral braces all the way across and we'll be able to test the theory of how they'll work once I apply weight to them. And you can see that I have put these uh, continuous lateral restraints connected that from one side of the model to the other so everything is all braced properly now. So we should theoretically be able to pick this up and set it on the other side without any problem. And Go. Ta da! And there you have it. So that makes perfect sense. And uh, it's quite a difference from, from before we had that connected to the properly braced side. One last thing I want to mention is that my model is a 1 to 16 scale, 60 foot trusses. In other words, three quarter inches equals a foot. This is a 45 inch long model. The lumber itself is scaled to size and matches 60 foot trusses that I sent out on a job. And I 
wanted to mention that I got a call one day from a gentleman that we had shipped these trusses to and he was complaining about the trusses sagging six inches. I said, what? Six inches? Couldn't be. I don't see how that could possibly happen. So we better get down here and look at it. So I went down to the site and when I arrived I saw the trusses were not actually sagging six inches. They were bending out of plane. The trusses were bending so far out of plane they had that S shape from one end to the other that the peaks on the, on the common trusses were six inches lower, approximately, than the gable end. Well, that's out of plain bending, and that's spelling danger in my mind. I told them we better get out of the building, or just keep people out of the building, and um, let me see what I could do to come up with a way to fix them. They hadn't broken, they had only bent. So I went to a professional engineer to seek help and he was pretty excited. He said, we can, we can save this. I had sent him pictures of it and he gave me instructions on how to do it. And basically all it was was cutting the bracing off from the first truss, getting it straight, braced to the ground, and then pulling them back one at a time, <coughs> connecting them to that solid base truss for the first eight feet like I've done with these and then bracing them properly diagonally and connecting them laterally and once that was complete you could continue down through doing the same thing in the process you should also have a center support and Middle East suggested using pipe staging and so I gave all these instructions to the builder and told him how to do that. About two weeks after my visit, the building collapsed. The, the owner had called me, and this is how I know this, the owner had called me and uh, I learned that, that the builder disappeared shortly after that first day that I visited the site. He apparently didn't want to go back and try to fix the trusses. He thought it was better to, to run and hide, I guess. But um, the owner was interested in purchasing the trusses over again. And I told her that I could do that, but I really wanted her to have her new builder talk with me regarding the bracing so that this wouldn't happen again did call me and in a short time I knew we had an experienced builder um, taking care of this and he was telling me all about how he was going to brace it and put it all up and I was pretty comfortable with the guy and went back to the owner and told him to go right ahead this, this guy knows what he's doing. But anyway, first let me say there's really no joy in supplying the same trusses to a job a second time. Um, it's, it's, it's nice to put that extra dollars on the bottom line, but there's really no joy in it because we haven't made a happy customer and nobody wins. But the point is, please read and understand the handling and bracing instructions we send out with the trusses. Don't take any shortcuts or omit any part of it. If something is unclear to you, ask a representative from your component manufacturer about it. One phone call and a few minutes of your time could save you hundreds if not thousands of dollars. So the purpose of this video is to show how to temporarily brace trusses during erection and I think I've demonstrated how important that is and how to do that properly. I hope this helps you succeed with future trust projects and you should know that all the information is available on request, the bracing literature that I was talking about. And it's also supplied with, with each and every truss order that we, that we ship.